Let's turn this over to Dr. Sam. Great. Thank you. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, please write, uh, print them down. Uh, thank you. This is September is emergency preparedness. Okay. Next month, October is earthquake month, right? Okay. Uh, these are the things we're going to be talking about. Um, since we have a lawyer here, uh, I have to put my disclosures. All right. He's actually a very good lawyer. Very good lawyer. I have no idea what he does, but he's a lawyer. <laughs> we have just some questions. It's me. I pay my bills. I pay my bills. Am I a doctor and a lawyer in the same room? What's up with that? Okay. Uh, what do I need? Is? What do I need? Mass casualty, MCTs. We'll talk a little bit about MCTs, and then we'll have the we'll have a case scenario, eight case scenarios, uh, and then we'll have the practicums. The ladies will be assisted by the male volunteers to do the these uh, check the pulse oxes and blood pressures and pulse and, and how to apply baby cannulas, etc. We'll talk a little bit about the Good Samaritan Law and then we'll wrap up and with a little bit of a word about the CERT program in Britain. Alright. Thank you. For, oh, thank you. Alright, so um, by no means, you know, Dale and I have been in medical school and residency training and all that. This is not going to, this is not exhaustive. You guys know all this stuff. There's a lot to this. There's a lot to this and a lot of imagination and oh, creativity. Okay. You want. Um, I'm not going to be teaching basic life support. I'm not going to show you how to, how to do mouth to mouth. Uh, what is it called? Mouth to mouth what? No, no, no. Mouth to mouth regurgitation. We don't want to do that, right? You don't want people throwing up in your mouth, okay? Has anybody had anybody throw up on your face before? Anybody? Yes. I had to intubate a patient once and then. They just threw up on my face. I mean, that kind of. Yeah, I'm not the person with coccidial mycosis. You know, so get out of the uh, So there, is, there are two organizations that actually does uh, teach a basic life support: the American Red Cross and the American Heart Association. I prefer the American Heart Association. Uh, American Red Cross does a lot of a lot of uh, good stuff as well. They also teach, uh, teach you on the AEDs, the automated electrical uh, uh, electrical. Uh, uh, defibrillators, okay? Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the CERT program. Question. These are the qu questions. Who, what, where, and why, and how much, right? Who, what, where, and why, and how much? This is why. Who will need, who do you think needs your help? What will they need from you? And what is the setting? Where will you be needed? When will you be able to help? And why? Why are we here? Is there like nothing else to do tonight on Friday on Monday night? Is there like Monday night football that we're not going to watch? Okay. And then how much time, effort, emotional fortitude is needed? Okay. All right. Who needs your help? Okay. Who lives at home? <laughs> okay. Do you know the people living at home? Yeah. Okay. You know them. You know everybody at home. You know all. You know uh, my wife has diabetes. Oh my 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 dad has heart, heart disease. You know what's going on. That's very important. Know your intel, okay? How about when we get to family get-togethers, like Thanksgiving coming up, etc. Okay? So we know most of them. We don't know all of them, but generally speaking, we know most of them. So we kind of know you come in with a set of knowledge, okay? Knowledge, that's why I want to impress upon you. Stuff is important, but knowledge takes, uh, is, is pre, uh, primo, all right? Workplace. Anybody go to a workplace? Anybody have a workplace? Okay, you go to a workplace. Do you know everybody's health? Of course not. You know some, maybe. Yeah, this person has, you know, a cocaine addiction or whatnot. Okay, whatever. Okay? But you don't know everybody. Church, same thing. It's a large group of people. We kind of know some people. Costco. Okay, Sam's Club, not Costco. Sam's Club. Do you know everybody at Sam's Club? Of course not. Lots of people. Somebody's down. Lots of people. You have no knowledge what that person is. So again, who do you encounter? So generally speaking, you don't want to take care of people. You don't want to be a first responder. Don't go to Costco. Go to Dance Club. All right. So again, it depends on your scenario. All right. Um, this is my family. This is not me, but this is my family. You know each person. All right. Who will need your help? OK, 
okay? So do you go into large groups of people like BLM protesting, okay? If you do, get a Kevlar, okay? And, okay, you know, um, uh, we have an ophthalmologist here. Is there an ophthalmologist here? Oh, there's an ophthalmologist there, okay. All right, I'm sorry guys, as a doctor, if I shoot you, guess what happens? There's blood. I faint at the sight of blood. No, I don't, okay. If I shoot you, I have to take care of you. I don't want to take care of you. So what do you do? So you do this. You shine that in their eyes. You shine that. I did this by accident, guess what? I got one minute, it's so stupid. Okay. Um, this, you blind it for a little bit, and you're on your way. Get to them, and you, you don't have to say, stop, don't move. I gotta get my single point laser. No, you get these multi beam lasers, okay? 20 bucks, okay? And they get blinded. You say, I'm not an ophthalmologist. You get the ophthalmologist to help you, and you're on your way, okay? Where do you get it? 20 bucks. Uh, Where? You can get an Amazon. Or, I don't buy or it. yeah, just take a laser. Get the green one, not the red one. It has, it has a different uh, frequency. Alright? So, uh, it's and it's legal. Oh. You know, if you wear a vest, they will shoot you in the head and tell you. But most people are. If they're stupid, what do you think stupid people do? They go for the chest. You know, all you have to do, you know, what is it I heard about uh, people from other gangs, okay? All you do is just stand still. They're just gonna, they don't know how to shoot. They, they use one hand, okay? They use their left hand, left hand and they, they don't know how to shoot. They don't, you know, you guys know how to shoot. But anyway, this is, you don't need the CCW for this. Okay? Alright. Okay, and let's move on. Uh, okay, uh, anybody go to Raid, Rad, Raid, whatever you call it? I don't go to Raid, okay? Uh, Party, rallies, and all that. I just avoid that kind of environment because then you have to take care of them. Something happens to take care of them and they're BLMs, okay? So be careful about that. Alright, what will they need from you, okay? Knowledge, skills, and experience. Knowledge, skills, and experience. Okay? That's why you guys are here, to develop knowledge. And you've been to a lot of these before. I'm sure many of you have gone to a lot of these things before. Knowledge builds on knowledge, builds on knowledge, but you gotta get the experience, okay? Gotta get the experience and the skills. So we'll, take, we'll take, teach you a little bit about skills later. Uh, you gotta have the time, you gotta have the emotional, I just want to emphasize the issue of emotional strength. A lot, of you, a lot of people are very squeamish about, oh, that guy looks dead. May not be. But that guy looks dead, you kind of shy, shy, shy away. Not a good thing. You're here, and we'll talk about why you want to do this, or why I want to do this, okay? Physical strength. If you have back pain, if you have, you know, if you're kind of not really healthy, and you're, you have back pain, if you guys don't have back pain, you kind of, you kind of well, pretend you don't have back pain. Help them. Okay, but you gotta make sure you're okay before you can help somebody else, okay? Alright, physical strength, alright? Alright, where's the setting we talked about that? Is the area that you're actually trying to rescue somebody, is it safe? Is it safe? Can you swim? Okay? If the person's submerged, you can't swim, forget it. Okay? Don't go in there. Is there an electrical, active electrical wire there? Don't go there, okay? So make sure you are, you are, is there a, 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 what is that, a bad unleashed pit bull there, okay? Take care of you first, make sure your environment is safe before you actually help, okay? Um, how far, anybody here live in Redlands? So where's Redlands Community Hospital? From here, how far is it? How far is it? From here, this point right here, somebody's in the class right now. Two and a half miles. Two and a half miles. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So two miles. Okay. So know your surroundings. Okay. If you're at Yukaipa, uh, where's the nearest hospital in Yukaipa? And how long does it take you? Let's say you're you're on Fifth uh, Fifth that what is it Fifth Street and uh, whatever uh, Oakland uh, or Springs Road. Okay. Whatever. It takes, so know your surrounding, where you're going to be, up, down, all around, right? You always know up, down, all around, know your surrounding, okay? Um, generally speaking, your response time in this area is about five to ten minutes, okay? It's supposed to be five minutes, okay? It's supposed to be. In Redlands, 
uh, back in 2013, there was a survey done. Actually, about 60% of the calls arrived more than six minutes. All right. So you're you're someone's found out, or you're nervous, and that six minutes takes a long time. It's really a long time for you. Okay. So again, you got to know what your setting is and know your area. Hillside, be careful about doing rescue for it on hillsides. Okay. Because uh, things fall and you fall. All right. All right. When will you when will you be able to help? Actually, the real question is what limits you helping now? What limits you? Is it because I, I don't have time to help? Well, we all have the same amount of time. It's just our priorities. Okay. Uh, we don't have enough training opportunities. Well, that's why you're here. Uh, to learn basic life support with uh, urban art, etc. Or learn to surf training. Okay. Physical barriers, you can't get to that or that place, all right, to, to help out. The cost, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of stuff. There's a trauma kit, there's a hundred bucks for a trauma kit, okay? Don't expect everybody to have a trauma kit, okay? You're in an environment where you don't, you know, no one's gonna shoot at you because your BLM doesn't exist there. Well, where does BLM doesn't exist? Okay, well, whatever, all right? So, again, cost may be a limiting factor, okay? but. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about the kids, kids. Alright? Why do you need to help? Why? Is, is it good enough just to be good? Well, Paul wrote uh, in uh, what, 60, 70, 80, or something like that. Man, you know about this. You know Bible stuff. <laughs> in Hebrews, right? And do not forget to do good and share with others. For such sacrifices, God is pleased. And in Matthew, why do goods? Uh, um, why do goods? Why do good? You see that same guys. In the same way, let your light shine for others, that they may see your good deeds. And the key here is to glorify God, glorify your Father in heaven. That's why we do what we do. Otherwise, why are we doing? Why are we helping people? Okay. All right, what do I need? Lots of stuff. There's, a, there's going to be lots of stuff. Uh, there's a toilet thing in there. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. Right. I thought I was doing the go bag thing. Where's Carolyn? I thought I was doing the go bag next time. Am I doing the go bag? Next time. Next time, okay. So what, you have the toilet thing. Evacuation is next time. Go, go bags. Oh, you mean evacuate, like evacuate the house? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Basically. Basic supplies, so what we're going to try to focus on, basic supplies that fits most of your needs. Okay, basic stuff that fits most of your needs. More is not better, okay? More is just more, okay? Target supplies and tools targeted for your environment. We are not Louisiana, guys, no, we're not Louisiana. There is no flooding here that we know of, right? There's earthquakes, what, is, what's hap what happens here? There's earthquakes, fires, and be yeah. yeah. He's learned, he's got it. Okay. And we'll have some examples. There's a whole bunch of examples, right? What do I need? Where can I get it? These are kind of the places where I have this on your handout here. Uh, this, uh, I added some more on your handout. Uh, I added some more on the PowerPoint since the handout, okay? Uh, and we can actually post it on the website down below. Uh, Amazon is good, but you know what the problem with that is? It's Amazon, yeah. right? You're supporting Walmart's yeah. yeah. best friend. Yeah, it's like Walmart. Same thing. Okay, LGBTWTAXQYZ, GP, LGBT. Same thing with CVS. Okay, CVS. CVS, however, is expensive, but they have stuff there. Okay, Walmart, post offices. Okay, the post office. You're gonna be show uh, that the the um, demo's gonna be showing you how to do it. Um, they're like 10 bucks. You can buy up to 50 bucks. They cost, okay? But these are um, 9 bucks, 10 bucks. But you have to get your own batteries, right? Okay. Alright, All right. we'll look, talk a little bit about triage, okay? Um, has anybody been involved in triage, mass casualty triage? Okay, so 
So basically, when there's a big earthquake or whatever, and um, the arc is actually a, a red cross, designated red cross area for mass casualties. Okay? So we're using this area here. We generally, in the past, it would be red, yellow, green. The big mats over here, big mats, big mats. Red, yellow, green. Paramedics have egress to the out. Yeah, they uh, can go in and out over here. All right? But now there's five of them. For your purposes, or just for your purposes, you're going to be involved in yellows. Generally speaking, yellows. Okay? But let the professionals deal with the blacks. Did I say that incorrectly? I meant, you know what? Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, black. It's black. Uh, expect me. They're going to die. All right? Uh, first thing, what do we do with people before they die? They're severely injured. They die of injuries. We pray. Okay? Pray that they are going to heaven. Okay? And accepting Christ. Give the pain to the palliative and we set them aside. The other way of it is what? You know, am I, I'm not being racist. Because I have red blood just as you. Okay? These people don't need help. Go away. Alright? What we're concerned about is the red, yellow, and the green. Okay? The red ones are, they need to be transported immediately. These are the surgical wounds, they need to be transported. You probably won't be involved in that. Okay? They're not, if you're involved in CERC, in the CERC program, you'll probably be dealing with these with the yellows and the greens, okay? So red, immediate transport. You probably won't be involved in that. The, going back to the greens on the, the on the greens, these may have broken bones and things like that. And normally we usually would get them to the hospital, but because of limited resources, high volume, the emergent problems, they're gonna have to just come back the next day or just kind of set them off to the side. Yellow, on the other hand, this is where you need to do frequent triage. What is meant by frequent triage? They may get worse, they may get better. They may get worse, they may get better. How, what do you do? You triage. You basically, the demo, the people will be, be doing the practical with you, will show you how to check your blood pressure, your pulse ox. Blood pressure, pulse ox. How to check the pulses, the major pulse. We're not going to do femoral pulses today, okay? Because that's kind of inappropriate today. But you can check your own femoral pulses by yourself. All right? So basically, this is your max casualty triage. So again, the ARC is a designated Red Cross triage center. Okay? All right. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about burns. Where's burns? Are you burned? You're the burn person. So we're going to talk a little bit about the burn person later on. You know, this is not a new handout. You have basically three, four stages of burns, okay? We'll simplify it, okay? It's red and it hurts, skin is still intact, it's, it's, you poured something on that, on that part, okay? You poured something on that, something hot, like something hot, like a star, star, what do you call that? Uh, huh? Starbucks? Starbucks coffee? Not McDonald's, okay? Starbucks. No one goes to Starbucks. So you, you pour it and it gets really hot, okay? Don't worry, skin is intact, no blisters, all right? That's stage one, don't worry about that, we'll talk about that when we do the demo, all right? Stage two, okay? You have blisters, ah! There's blisters, but it hasn't ruptured. It hasn't ruptured, that's stage two. That you need to do something, you need to pour water, flushing the water out, and then on top of that, wet towels, okay? And don't put a dry towel, don't put a dry towel on it, because what happens when you take it off? You're gonna rip the skin, and that'll really make it into a stage three, okay? You don't want it to show down to stage three, but you're gonna have bad infections with that, all right? And then obviously stage three is basically when you uh, tear off the skin, and then you see the underlying redness. All that is blood vessels, okay? Now you open up, if anybody ate dinner, Already, I feel like throwing up. Uh, don't. Okay, don't. I mean, don't eat dinner. Don't, don't throw up because we're not going to talk about throwing up today. And then uh, the problem with uh, when we have circumferential burns, okay, goes all the way around. What happens is that they can actually have so much swelling in the compartment of the arm or the extremity, they have what they call a compartment syndrome. It presses against the arteries and they lose that extremity. They lose that extremity. That's a 911 death. Obviously, everything we talk, we talk first. Get that 911 because you're the, you're not the professional there. Okay. 
Uh, then, of course, wound progression it, it, it gets worse and worse. They're going to lose skin, they're going to lose volume, and then they're, they're susceptible to loss of, uh, loss of blood flow. Okay? All right. Uh, so we're going to talk about case scenarios, but before we do that, I'm going to just go and talk a little bit about some of the stuff that I have. I think we talked, um, I think some people were concerned about the trauma kit. So trauma kit uh, is different from a regular first aid kit. The trauma kit has a trauma pack where they actually have uh, their quick, quick clot bleeding uh, uh, supplies. And uh, here's an example where there's chest wounds, okay? So if there's a, uh, a gunshot wound, GSW, okay? Gunshot wound, there's blood all the place. And you're not gonna take that bullet out. You're not gonna do that, okay? You wanna seal it, all right? This is a chest seal, okay? They have chest seals. These are, if, I, if I was to open them, that's seven bucks, okay? So you mind if I not go open it? Mm -hmm. Okay, all okay. right. So um, chest seals are there. Uh, uh, extremity seals are also there. Uh, just so that you know, when there's a penetrating wound with a foreign object, don't take it out. Okay, don't take it out. When you take it out, what happens? Okay, you may actually make things worse. So leave well enough alone. Okay. So that the trauma kit. It's about. Um, I guess you can get this for about a hundred bucks, uh, and it, it can go on forever. I recommend getting um, kits that actually open out. Okay. Don't use. Don't use what I have, okay? Don't use a backpack, okay? Backpacks, you gotta start digging. You actually want them to open up, okay? Open up and out, quick and, uh, and quick access, okay? There's also some kits um, that actually have these, what they call scissors, they're not really scissors, but they're, we'll call them scissors, okay? Make sure these are really, really good scissors, okay? Because what you want to do is, when you have, when you don't have time, you you want to cut. You just want to cut whatever you need. You don't want these little plastic ones, okay? And get familiar how to hold on to it without throwing it. Because you're, you're nervous. You're in, you're gonna just throw this away, and then you lost it. You have no time to do, to mess up with that, all right? So make sure your kit is uh, made in the USA. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. I know there's some things here. Okay. Um, I think we're okay. So now let's go through the different scenarios. Okay. Are we okay with that? We'll talk about the Kevlar. Let's go through the different scenarios. We're gonna. These are your scenarios that we're gonna talk about. The unconscious person without a pulse and a blood pressure, uh, without pulse and resp respiration, etc. And then this is the the uh, the uh, practical. Can we have our first uh, Paul? Can you come up over here? And then I'm going to need our volunteer to help me out. V is our volunteer to help me out because I have a bad back. And we have our Paul. Hold on to our associate after here. He is going to sit down. Okay. Generally speaking, he's sitting down in his office and he becomes unconscious. And he's unconscious. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to feel his pulse. Uh, you know, he has a pulse, button. but pretend I'm counting five, six, I can't feel a pulse after 10 seconds. He's not breathing. He's not breathing. What am I going to do? Yeah. Tip him over there. Point out and go over there. Generally speaking, you're going to find him on the ground, okay? Okay, no fall asleep. No fall asleep. <laughs> His name is uh, Paul Mupa. Okay. Are you comfortable? That's so the Can you guys see? Yes. You're welcome to come around. <coughs> Can you guys see? Okay. So, what I'm going to do, I'm always on the right side of the can, okay? I'm not going to do mouth to mouth. He's not breathing, right? He's not breathing. But, and he doesn't have a pulse. Your first thing to do is feel the chest over here at, on the sternum, okay? You can say mid, low sternum if you want. And you start chest compression. Okay, your shoulders are straight, you're, you're vertical to his chest, okay? And you go one and two and three and four and five and six, and you're going at a hundred per minute, okay? Now, if you want to, if you have a second rescuer, you got to have them do ventilation, okay? If they actually have an animal bag or something. But generally speaking, you're not going to have that unless you want to do mouth to mouth. Anybody want to do mouth to mouth? Okay, don't worry about that. My husband. 
Yeah, of course, 10 minutes. Then you do 30 to 2. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and keep going to 30. Stop. She, uh, he's going to, you're, you're going to do mouth to mouth to your husband. Okay, hold the nose, okay? All right. I'm not going to teach you basic life support, okay? All right. Now, what did I do wrong here? What did I do wrong? You're supposed to say, if you can hear the sound of my voice, please respond. No, you did that already. You established unconsciousness. You established your unconsciousness. First thing you do before I did this, okay, the error that I did was what? No. Am I safe? Is the area safe? Okay? Is the area safe? Is there is there is it right in the middle of the street? Okay? Make sure you're safe because if you're not safe, what's gonna happen? Second thing, what do you do? Second thing is call for help. Okay, you can't be doing this all forever. Help, help, call 911. Get an AED, the automatic, uh, automated, uh, um, AED, AED. Electro, electro convulsive therapy. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. always call for help. So, I'm going to start that off. Always get help. Make sure your area is safe. If you can't take care of them because something happens, you get run over by a truck, you can't, you can't help them. Okay? So, um, so you do. Again, one and two and three and four and five, not the one, uh, what is it they say, uh, one one thousand, two one thousand, none of that stuff. It's one and two and three and four, yes. It's to, to be uh, staying alive on the BGs. <laughs> no, really, it is. Some of us are, are you, you're dating yourself. I'm, I'm a little younger than you. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, uh, so, uh, okay, now, he's, look, he's opened his eye. Okay, he's alive. Okay, so, okay, let's, let's do the next, let's do the Next one, okay. Next one is unconscious, and he has a pulse. I'm feeling his pulse here. He has a pulse, and he's breathing. Because I see his chest rise or his abdomen rise. Okay, he is breathing. Um, there's no blood around there. He's not involved in a car accident. It's atraumatic, no trauma. Okay. So what am I going to do now? Huh? Yes. Right, so what I'm going to do, this is called the safe recovery position, okay? The recovery position. So what you want to do is you stretch out his left arm. Because he's, you know, he's unconscious, he may throw up. What happens when you throw up? You aspirate and you obstruct the airway. The aspiration pneumonia, don't care about that. It's the obstruction of the airway, okay? So what you want to do is you bend his left leg a little bit. As you do that, assuming, again, no trauma, he didn't have a hip fracture. All right, it's going to automatically turn a little bit to the side there. You have your left knee on the side over here because you're going to be using that to buttress your his back, okay? And then you bend his right knee to bend over. Use your left hand on your shoulder and you bend him over, okay? You see that? And I'm using my knee here, my thigh here, to hold on to him, okay? And he is, and I feel a pulse, okay? And I had my handy dandy pulse ox. And it's registered his pulse. And try to wake him up, wake him up, wake him up. Okay? And he is saturating at 92% and his pulse rate is 81. Alright? See how quick that is? I didn't check a blood pressure. I didn't check a blood pressure because I don't carry that way. I can carry this on my pocket so small. Okay? All right. So this is the unconscious. This is the unconscious. She's breathing. It has a pulse. Put him on the side. Recovery. This is called the recovery position. Okay. Um. Oh. Okay. Now we have also have to find an intel. I'm looking in your pockets. I'm looking for money, by the way. <laughs> you gotta get your intel, right? This is your doctor or lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want to do? Oh, this gave him a bottle. You smell his breath. I can't get. Yeah. You smell his breath. It smells kind of fruity. Okay. It smells fruity. It smells like fruits. What the heck is that? He's not drinking. Yeah. He's, no, he's not drinking fruit. Not drinking fruit. Fruity, fruity, whatever. Okay. Is that kind of, is a diabetic? 
He probably gave himself insulin or had some diabetic medication. He's in diabetic ketoacidosis. He's actually breathing out fruity tutti uh, ketones, okay? And it smells pretty sweet, all right? So what do you do? He's hypoglycemic. He's low, 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 low his blood sugar. Orange juice. You, you have orange juice? Get the, sir, can you give me some orange juice? Yeah, yeah, large size, please. Okay. So what I have, so grape jelly or strawberry jelly? Which one do you want? Grape. Grape or sugar? Uh, grape, not strawberry. Why? Strawberry is red. You want to avoid red. Because what if it throws up, whatever. Okay. Best would be honey. You know, you know those packed honeys that you go to wherever and you give them honey things, okay? Okay. If not, you get these little grape jellies and you steal it at Denny's, okay, whatever. But I prefer something clear, like an apple jelly, it's clearer, okay? Grape jelly is just what I have, okay? But don't get the red jelly. And put it in, and put it in the mouth around the buckle, called under the tongue or in the cheeks, okay? That's for great absorption of, of stuff. You don't have, they don't have to swallow it. Absorption under the tongue or in the buckle, in the, uh, on the cheeks, okay? So that would bring his blood sugar. What if he's a, what if you look at him and go? Oh, he has track marks. Oh, look, he has track marks here. Or oh, he shot, he shot up himself in the in the toe and in between the digits. What what's wrong with him? Drug addict. He's a druggie. Okay. What do drug addicts shoot up with? Heroin. Oh, okay, opiates, right? Or his prescription opiates in this day and age. I'm not saying him, yeah, but I mean older people can have that too, as well as younger people. Okay. Uh, prescription drug opiates, major problem nowadays. Look at the pockets. They have, they may have this. This is called a Narcan. Narcan. Uh, this is Henry. Okay. This is a Narcan mist. This is a Narcan mist. All right. I'll show you how to use that. Okay. A little Narcan mist. All right. So we don't inject it. We don't want to inject these. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to put this up the nose. Okay. So what you want to do, they usually come in packs of two. Okay, they have a little container here. They usually have packs of two, but most people, if they're going to have, they're going to go outside, okay, they only have one. Okay, you have two nostrils. Hopefully, this person did not do cocaine and snort cocaine and mess up the other nose. Okay, I know. So some people, some, some people recommend shooting the entire dose on one nose or split it. Half this dose and half this dose. And all you have to do is press this. That's all you do is press it. Okay, just press it. All right. So it's missed. Don't do it. No, don't do this. Hey, does it work? You lost it. That's it. Okay. So this is uh, four milligrams of naloxone. Okay. And you save them. There's no side effects. They may get. They may wake up and get pissed at you because they're out of their blah blah land. Okay. So uh, this is your, and this uh, is in their pockets. What is the stuff called again? Narcan. Narcan. You know, N A R C A N. Narcan. <coughs> and I have a, I have a thing on the uh, uh, also known as naloxone. Okay. So these are these are usually uh, prescribed by their doctors. Will that be in a kit or not? Uh, uh, in a packet. They're, they're in a packet. In, in one of those uh, packages. Yeah. It's a little. It's a little. You know, it's a little packet. Yeah, uh, they come in tubes, so they usually have one at home. They tell you not to keep it outside greater than 104 degrees. <laughs> okay, so there. Yes. Do, do they go into uh, withdrawals immediately? No. I don't care. I don't care if they go into withdrawal. No, they won't be. They won't be. You're, you're, what you're doing is you're blocking the opiate receptors. Right. So whatever receptors are, so they don't live. Hopefully they'll lift. Hopefully they'll lift. So this is one dose, okay? So supposed to keep this uh, below 104 degrees, okay? So um, so you're the unconscious. Are you conscious now? Okay. Now we're gonna be checking blood pressures, okay? Now he's kind of getting back, same thing like the previous person. Got a pulse, get his blood pressure. We'll show you how to check your blood pressures, okay? Ideally. Ideally, if you want, check both arms if you can. Blood pressure arm, this arm, and then this arm. If they're radically different, you're thinking about something else. Good information to give the paramedics. 
there's no blood pressure here, there's a the blood pressure here. Something's wrong. Okay, it's called a dissection. Okay, you're dissection. That's the, uh, what's that, Three Company guy? Three Company? Yeah, John Brenner. John Brenner, yeah. Um, that was an easy diagnosis that was missed. All right. Okay, so thank you very much, Paul. Give him a round of applause. No, no, not trust me. No, 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 no. <laughs> Alright. Alright. He's the he's the localized burn, okay? Oh look, he's married. Where is he? Where's his hair? He's married to you. Can you show everybody your ring? What's the significance of the ring? Okay? 
So these are pretty cheap. These are like, uh, I got from my neighbor. I think I stole it. Did I steal it from him? Okay, whatever. It's a kid. All right? So, um, now I do not, some of your kids may actually have these little abrasive things, okay? They say, oh, this is your first aid kit. They don't tell you, okay, you can use this. Don't use the kit inside that actually has an abrasive to clean it up, or these sponges to clean things out. Uh, generally speaking, I think Dale, you and I remember this in surgery, okay? We don't do this when we clean. You don't see surgeons going like this, cleaning that. One wipe, gone. Or wipe, one way, gone. Because what you're doing, when you're actually scrubbing like this, what happens? You're just putting more germs into it, okay? So, one wipe out, okay? So, I generally don't use this, all right? Um, so, that's the burn. Did you get the ring back? Why? No. So, Dr. Sam. Yes. When, when you're saying you put water on it. Yes. And then you put the cloth on it. Yeah, no, wet. Wet. Yeah, yeah, wet. And then you just make sure it's dry over the cloth, or do you take the cloth off and use the paint? Uh, no, Keep, put the fan over it because you're, you're keeping it cool. Yeah, you're keeping it cool. Because you want evaporation. You want it to evaporate, and then what's it? Fair dry again, and you apply it. By that time, you're seeing the doctor. Get this is all first aid. You know, this is not all, all end of all treatment. With the water, is it just one time flush? Mm -hmm. Keep it flushing. Keep it flushing. If you can put it under the sink, you know, or you have a clean water. I don't know. Do you have clean water in your sink? <laughs> Whatever. But you just, you know, keep it, keep it running, okay? No brown water. No Detroit water. Answer your question. Um, okay, so now, uh, did you say that your chest hurts? Oh, you got chest hurts. Okay, so now, do you mind if I mention you? Do you mind if I? Okay, he's not going to beat me up today, right? So you have a person who says, my chest hurts, okay? Get your intel. Find out what's going on. Generally speaking, if you know your family, I ate dinner with him last week. We talked. He says, "Yeah, you know, I had this uh, a stent placed in me, you know, last year. And we're doing okay." And now he's, I see him. He says, "Oh, my chest hurts. What do you do?" <laughs> yeah, that too. Again, everything what I said before: safety for yourself, safety for the patient, and call for help. Okay. So he says. My chest hurts, okay? Uh, you have some time, but I would just say get your pulse ox and get your blood pressure, right? Pulse. Pulse ox, okay? And then as, you're, as he's doing that, you're not just gonna, you're gonna talk to him. So tell me about your chest pain. Is it, yeah, hurts. <laughs> if he says, this is a very specific line of questioning, does it, is it similar to what your chest pain was when you had the heart attack last year? You never had a heart attack. No, no. <laughs> you had a heart attack. Okay. You had a heart attack. You had a stent placed. There's a reason why you had a stent. I had chest pain. It's exactly the same kind of symptoms. If they say it's exactly the same kind of symptoms that you had prior that led you to have the stent, this is what's going on. Obviously, there's an arrow sitting in his chest. Obviously, that's causing his chest to move. Okay, All right. But generally speaking, if they're saying, you know, okay, Nelson is not a young person. Okay, he has this earlobe crease here that's greater than fifty percent. Okay, so he probably has coronary disease. Okay, he's not my ideal. Um, Me <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. So he has risk factors for coronary disease. Okay? You see that. So what do you think is causing his chest pain? Most likely coronary disease. Okay? Got right now, he has pulse ox 90, 94%. And what was your pulse? It's slow. It's 48. Oh, it's 48. I'm in Brazil. You're on a beta blocker? Yeah, beta blocker? Yes. Yeah, he's on a beta blocker. No. Whatever. Okay. So the question is. Does he have nitro? Does he have a nitro in his pocket? Okay. He has a nitro in his pocket. His chest pain hurts. His chest hurts. Okay. So do you give him a nitro? 
Would you give him a nitro? Who wants to give him a nitro? Who does not want to give him a nitro? You guys don't want to give him a nitro. No, I'm not doing anything like that before the spare medicine. Okay, hold on. All right. What I would do is I would put him on the sink again, put him down on the ground. You don't want to do that now. Put him down on the ground, put him seated up. Say, my father, I'm seated up with this. So if he starts to faint, or whatever from this chest pain, you're already on the ground, you can start CPR if you need to or they have AAD, okay? But, he has nitro in his pocket. Sir, it's up to you if you want to put nitro in your pocket, uh, from your nitro in your pocket, most likely you will do that, okay? The problem is with that, okay, is if he has, so they would know this, okay? He gave him nitro and he faints. What happened? Give him the nitro under the tongue. He takes the nitro, okay? He takes the nitro, I did not give it to him, all right? That's the legal aspect of it, okay? He took it, he put it under his tongue, and he faints, okay? His blood pressure is like really low now, okay? What happened? If his blood pressure is really low, what do you do? Bring the legs up. Okay, because auto flu, auto infiltration of fluids, okay, you're giving fluids by bringing, bringing the leg up. So what he just had was a right heart failure. He had a heart attack in the right ventricle. Okay, by giving nitro, he phenodilated, dilated his blood vessels, all the, all the blood vessels in the legs are dilated, not getting blood into his, into his heart, into his brain. Okay, that's why he fainted. All right, so you bring the legs up, give them fluids, you push fluids in basically your leg, volume in your legs, push the volume into his heart to get the left heart uh, uh, fluid and go into the brain, okay? So that's right heart failure, all right? So that's a diagnostic maneuver, okay? So it's okay to give the nitro, it is okay to do that, okay? So that's a diagnostic maneuver. But again, you raise their right leg up. Again, their low blood pressure. You don't even have to check the blood pressure because he's already down. That's God saying, I'm going to get blood, I get blood back to my brain by, my, by, fall, by collapsing. Okay? So that's. Uh, what about aspirin? Someone said about aspirin. Would you give aspirin? No, because it could cause uh, digestive distress. Yeah. Don't care. So what? Uh, he's never been. Uh, I'd rather. Liz, our paramedics said don't give it to him. Okay. I, I did that for a guy and he survived, but okay. you're taking a chance on that. Uh, don't care. Fitz American Law. We'll talk about Fitz American Law. He might be allergic to salicylic acid. No. If he has aspirin in his pocket, okay? No. If he has aspirin in his pocket, yes. there's a reason why he has aspirin in his pocket. He's not allergic to it. He doesn't have a GI bleed that he knows of, okay? Because he has aspirin in his pocket. You tell him, it's up to you, sir, to take that aspirin. Okay, so he administered to himself, okay? So that, I would do that, I would say, chew the aspirin, okay? Now then you say, but they're gonna do an angio and all that, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, they can't do an angio if he does, okay? So aspirin, uh, <laughs> this is very important to, to, give him, to have him chew that aspirin if he has chest pain, okay? That is related to what he has, known coronary disease. If it's not known coronary disease, you don't know that, then I agree with you, you don't know. He might be having something else going on. All right, he may have a GIB causing his chest pain. You give him an aspirin, you give him the aspirin, you kind of not, did not help him. Okay, this is again, no coronary disease. He has the aspirin, he has the nitro. What if he can't talk and you, are you supposed to go through his pocket to see if he's already prepared? No, so my patient, there is nobody here who's my patient. My patients, they always carry a list of medicines in their pocket, not in the wallet. Why is that? They always have a list in their pocket, not in the wallet. If they get robbed, wallet's gone, hit them on the head, got them before to go. Paramedic said, what medicine are you taking? Oh, little white girl. But you have that list. The list will give you the diagnosis, okay? I'm going to try to emphasize that on your intel. You, you search their pockets. If they have a list of medicines, that tells you you probably won't know that. By that time, paramedics will be there. You actually help the paramedics, okay? By making that. Again, unconscious, you basically maintain the airway, the breathing, circulation. You're just there. Remember, you're not doing N-all, 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 whatever, okay? Sam, 
Yes. So if you put the medications in the cell phone or if they have that, if they have that, you know that? Right, except, except the problem with the cell phone tape, I know about that, okay, paramedics know that. Okay, most of us don't know that. We're talking about the general person, and I don't carry, I don't set my cell phone, okay? Keep things simple. Piece of paper, the old fashioned way, you know, uh, yeah, it gets into the wash, just do it again. They write it down themselves. That way they know their, their diagnosis. Oh, you Oh, you too. Okay, Donald Trump. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Do they, do they still teach face is red, raise the head, face is pale, raise the tail? Oh, that, oh raise the tail? No, no. Uh, that predated me. That predated me. Okay, so Trindellenburg, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. Um, you know, again, you know, um, what is red relative to certain some people? Some people are dark skinned, you can't really tell the redness of that. Okay, so did that kind of answer your question, maybe? Okay. What if this is CHF? So get heart failure, again, boils down to, sir, are your legs swollen? Are you short of breath when you're lying down? Okay, yeah, maybe, but you're not there to make the diagnosis. You're there just first responder. You're not going to be giving license. You're not going to be doing that. You're going to be checking the ATCs and the pulse box and the blood pressure. You're not going to go through all this. I mean, we can, but that's beyond your school. Uh, beyond, probably beyond my school, because you don't have the tools there, okay? Do uh, you guys gonna get those, what does it have, the cardio, cardio thing on the, you see those cardio, you see the little EKG things, okay? Right? Don't buy it. You buy it, 99 bucks. Go ahead, fine, go ahead and do that. It's okay for irregular heart rate, atrial fibrillation. Short of that, it's useless, but you know, if you're going to have palpitations and you're going to see whether you have atrial fibrillation, if you have palpitations, what should you be doing? Yeah, go! Cool. It's cool. Okay? But someone's making good money out of that, okay? Because I was stupid enough to buy those things. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so thank you very much. Let's give it a <laughs> No. No. Okay. Che uh, heart attacks can present, especially as you get older, like these people. These are old people here. Okay. <laughs> and and females, yes, I'm being gender non-neutral, not gender. Females, uh, perimenopausal, and older people may present differently. May they may present with, oh, I'm confused. That may be their heart attack. Uh, they may be short of just present a short of breath. That may be the heart attack. Uh, they may be feeling like lots of gas. I never have gas. I'm so bloated. I didn't eat anything. I didn't eat a Torino. I didn't have my monster drink. But I'm so bloated. I'm too nauseated. Most likely that's the right ventricular infarct. Okay, so the right, the right, and left. Okay, that's the right heart arm. Right, most of the time. So again, they can present differently. Did that answer your question? Oh, I'm sorry. People also with diabetes, people with insulin requiring diabetes, okay, also may present differently. All right. So don't belittle chest pain, chest discomfort, shortness of breath. Don't belittle it. Ah, it's just the pizza that I ate from high end biology. Okay. All right. Did that answer your question? Okay. And the uh, right arm. Hurting? No. Don't worry about the arms. Don't worry about the shoulders. They can present. To both shoulders or to the right shoulder. Everybody's oh my left arm. Oh I can't. I can't hurt my head. No, it doesn't have to be that way. Okay? Did it help answer your question? Actually the uh, uh, specificity is greater with both shoulders, both shoulders, okay? If it's the back, tearing back pain, okay? Oh her chest going way to the back. Okay? Think of John Ritter. Three's company, John Ritter, three's company. Oh, yeah, dissection. John Ritter. John Ritter. Okay. So you want to get oh, blood pressure on both arms. One arm blood pressure. There's no both. There's no blood pressure. There's blood pressure here. There's no blood pressure, but there's blood pressure. He's dissecting. Okay. Are you going to get aspirin to that guy? No. That's the person you don't want to get. All right. Whether you refuse medical attention. Ever. But I like these. Can we get um, uh, Greg? Okay, so Greg is um, 
What is it, Greg? I can't breathe. Hands up. I can't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's, he, okay. So uh, where's where? You're right here. Right here. Okay. So Greg can't breathe. Okay. So, <gasps> so he's a lawyer. He he just ate at this at this really expensive restaurant. He ate it. Uh, he ate at Taco Bell. Okay. So. So what do you think happened? He just ate, and he can, he does the universal universal uh, sign of choking. Okay. Okay. So what do you do? Hi, man, right? Okay. So do you go in front of him and push, and he's gonna throw the hot dog in front of your face? Uh, <laughs> so which, he'll probably be standing up, okay? Because usually when they when they choke on something, they suddenly get up. Ah, this is the first time I've done it to a lawyer. Wrap around, okay, and what you do, I'm not going to do it, you brush upwards around him, above, his, uh, below the side board. You feel that little little thing right here? You feel that thing? Uh, you can't feel it, I feel it. It's there. Okay, below that, what you want to do is intra-abdominal thrust. Push it up, okay? Don't be a wimp. Be an American. What is it you're doing when you do that? It increases the intra, intra abdominal uh, pressures. So it'll force whatever's in the back of his throat. Hopefully it's way in the back of his throat. Hopefully it's not that, shaking. That, it'll propel it out. Going up to here, that's your. You're, you're pushing the belly because your belly has a lot of give. Alright? There's, there's a lot of pressure and you're basically pushing all that stuff up forcefully. Okay? Don't do it like a don't do it like 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 North Korea. Do it like an American. Oh whatever. Okay. Yeah, kid. So I actually had that done to me one time. I was sitting in a restaurant, I was eating steak, steak? The issue about can you breathe, if, you, if they can't say something, they have the universal thing, they're not going to say that. You waste time doing that. Because they're obviously choking on something. Okay? And you can see that there, there's no air movement. They're not moving. You have to do that now. So uh, I agree. I'm glad. Did you listen to it? <laughs> oh. So when there's something is coughing, then they are. Yeah, the coughing, that means there's some air movement.
Yes, well, where's my pickup for this? So you are seizure. He's also the seizure person. Uh, 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 he just works me up. Oh, oh, you're, oh, oh, okay. So, uh, who's, who's, who's doing, uh, okay, they are good, okay. So he's slurred speech. Have a seat, have a seat, Joe. Slurred speech, okay. Can't move, okay. Pretend you're slurred. Well, he's talking normally now, okay. And, and he can't move on one side of his body. So he's slurred here, he can't move on one side of his body, he can't feel on one side of his body. What happens? Stroke. Okay. Is that, is that, is that okay? Do we just let him, okay. Is that okay? Oh, okay. Is that okay? What do you do? Well, 911. Yeah, well, that, we'll assume everything's safe and 911, okay? All right. So what we want to do is, do we give a good aspirin? No. No. Definitely not. Do not. This is the time you do not give an aspirin. Stroke. No aspirin. Because what if he's having a bleeding stroke? You made it worse. You made it worse. Bleeding stroke. You made it worse. All right? So what he says, he has cause for stroke or for diabetics, hypertension, cholesterol, okay, right, those things. What if he says he has a blood pressure medicine in his pocket? Would you give him? Say, okay, go ahead and take your blood pressure medicine. He's yeah, you took a blood pressure. His blood pressure is 180 over 100. All right, well, you got to give him his blood pressure. Did you go and take your blood pressure medicine? No. Who says yes? Who says no? Who wants to go home? <laughs> Do not give the blood pressure medicine. What happens is, that's a normal blood pressure response during a stroke, it go up suddenly, okay? The problem is that now you give him his blood pressure medicine, you drop his blood pressure, you drop his, uh, his cerebral perfusion pressure, his pressure can't get up there, now it's really low. Now you cause worsening of the stroke because there's no blood flow to the brain. The stroke is basically lack of blood flow to the brain from whatever cause. Okay? Either hardening of the arteries or lack of blood flow to the brain or a blood clot going to the brain. Okay? So for, for a person like that, do not give the don't give the aspirin, don't give the medicine. What do you do next? He's sitting down here. What do you do next? Lay him down. Lay him down. Lay him down. If anything, he doesn't want to like flat on his head, fine. Lay him with his head up just a little bit. Why? Why do we want to put him on a under, in a safe position, not a not a recovery position, but safe position. Where you stand, Joshua? Yeah. So what happens is you're actually, as you lay him down, you're actually increasing the blood flow. That's one. Number two, what if he crashes? You got him on the ground. You got him on the ground. Okay. And you start to throw up on the other side. So again, put him in a in a safe position so that when the when the paramedics come, they're gonna put him on the gurney anyway. Okay. What if he crashes? Uh, doesn't look oh, good. Doesn't scar. Not so Yeah. Did that answer your question? Did the camera answer your question? Yeah. yeah. What if it's related to the uh, blood thinners in your system? Can you personally can't do anything? You personally can't do anything. But I mean, if you're calling on someone and turn somebody into a real bitch really fast, really bad. You can A B C. You're you're one. You just if he's Start to uh, oh, have a pulse, or do you see here? Again, 911, right. hopefully within six minutes, right? Right, that's okay. Um, yeah, but the, I mean, if you want to stick green onions up his nose. What? Green onions up your nose? What's up with that? Do you guys like sticking green onions in people's noses? What does it do? Vitamin K is a better K uh, 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 tactics, right? So it's green, green leafy vegetables. It doesn't work. No, don't put that down. Don't put that down. I thought about it. Don't put that down. Okay. But good to get intel. Right. Good to put intel. Um, search the pockets. Okay. All right. Uh, let's give Greg a round of applause. Seizing, what do we do? 
Get okay, so our pressure feet started to go down on the ground, okay? So, go down. Go down. Okay, now he's, 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 on, his, he's on his back. He's on his back. Okay, now do we let him just seize like that? Do we say, okay, go ahead, seize, whatever. Five minutes, we just let him seize. Some, some people who have seizures have, they're taking a choke on their tongue or something. Yeah, they are adventures, right? You know, don't put them. Don't put them up. Right. So he's seizing, okay? Generally speaking, don't suppress the seizure, okay? Again, what you want to do is you want to put them in a safe position, okay? Yeah, tell them to move the drinks first, okay? <laughs> Alright, okay. Put them in a safe position, so he's seizing, and you let him go. If, however, and he's going to be peeing on himself or, or soiling himself, that's okay. That tells you he's having a grand mal seizure, okay, general chronic chronic seizure. He's going to seize, he's going to seize. The problem is that if he bites his tongue, it's okay. The problem is he bleeds. What happens when you bleed? A lot of blood is going to aspirate. Not, we're not worried about the aspiration the moment. We're worried about the amount of blood that's obstructing the airway, okay? So in that case, then, uh, Usually I don't have this amount of stuff, okay? Right on the mouth over here. Careful because it's going to bite on you. You need bite on you. Stick it on the side of it. Don't obstruct the airway, okay? And the, so don't go putting a tongue. Did you finish yet? You're not finished yet. Nine, greater than five minutes, these are very serious. It's more than five minutes, okay? More than five minutes. Within five minutes, they usually would die off and then you're okay. Still call 911. Okay? So again, greater than five minutes, not good. Right? So again, if there's if it's aspirate, you know what you guys heard about these tongue blades? They use those, what do they call those? Those tongue pressors? Pressure. No, don't do that. Don't put that in there because there's way to take a bite actually bite it. The problem is that they bite it off and what happens? And it splinters and then they sue you. Okay? Alright. <laughs> okay, last last but not least. Dr. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Get them out of the uh, out of the sun. Get them into a, a cooler environment. Okay. You're okay. Don't worry about it. You can drink the water. Drink it. Gobble, 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 because you're not nauseated. You guys are not nauseated. I'm passing by you guys. You guys are stroke. Not the same thing like the regular cardiovascular stroke, cerebrovascular stroke. You guys are heat stroke. You're confused like him. You're nauseated. You may be throwing up. Okay? And, you, and he's not sweating. How come he's not sweating? He's doing the underdog. He's not sweating. He is. And it's going crap. He's, 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 he's hot. He feels like anything. But you don't feel sweat. He's having a heat stroke. Do you give him fluids? Do you give him the things to drink? No. He's going to throw up. Same thing like these guys. You don't want to drink the water. You want to sip it, baby. Sip the water. No water. Drink the water. Sip the water. No water. Okay? So take your clothes off. <laughs> you want to take your clothes off, okay? Keep your private areas to themselves. But take your, take your shirt off, okay? Take your shirt off. If you want, the alternative is flood him with the water. Pour all the, all the clothes, okay? Pour all the clothes. Um, I didn't have, um, Carol, we didn't have any um, baggies. So I'll improvise. Put ice in your gloves. Key things about rescue is being, is improvising. Okay. So these are ice packs. Okay. For him, I'm gonna. <coughs> where should I put these little ice pack, ice packs? So you put around the neck, <coughs> neck over here, under the arms, and then the groin. Okay. You can put it on the torso, that would be fine, but you, if you only have limited areas, put it under the arms, around the neck, and in the front. Okay? And uh, uh, again, you put it in what kind of position? Rescue position, in a safety, safety position, recovery position. Okay? Because what's going to happen? He's nauseating, he's going to throw up. Okay? Um, uh, so are we done with you? Again, check your blood pressures. Okay? What is hypotensive? What is blood pressure like? 90 over 60 or 70 or 10 years? Yeah, you guys are going to show, we're show how blood pressure is short. What do we do? Legs up. Legs up. Okay? Legs up. That's the best way to get fluids in them. Don't give them water. Legs up. By that time, you should be fine. Now, let's go. Any questions on the demos? You are, you guys are heat cramped, okay? Don't worry, give them water, chill, cool mouth environment. Water uh, beverage No, just warm, just give them water. Because you don't know what the person, you don't know what the person, person's kidney function is like. You don't know, you can kill them. Don't kill them, okay? And the next one? You guys are heat exhaustion. You're dizzy, you're sweating, you are actually sweating. I know you are, but you are sweating, you're tired. Oh. You guys, sips of water, none of this fruit, none of these uh, red things, okay? No, no red bulls. You guys are stroke, confused. That's the key thing is confusion, no sweat, hot like the thickens, environment's very hot, no water, okay? But you cool them down quickly, all right? Did that answer your question? Let's do some uh, practical, oh, let's get a round of applause for